You are all on the Isle of Albion. And you've traveled for a very long way to come to the borderlands in Northern Albion. On the edge of the borderlands, not only does, it does winter time winter last time last much longer, um, but there are strange lights in the sky. So very few people ever venture farther than the borderland. As a result of this, there are some problems there. Wolves, wild animals, bandits, criminal gangs. And also, there are things which emerge every winter, uh, at least in stories, things that you've heard of. And some people, like yourself, will travel to these borderlands to go into these places that reveal themselves in wintertime to take whatever riches are left there or what people have abandoned. And so you've traveled to Zelkor's Ferry in East March. It is the last settlement, at least that you know of, in this northern part of the, what's called the Forest of Hope. And one Otto Bristleback has formed an inn there, a wayfaring inn. And there are several boats that make their way back and forth along the riverfront that form the only remaining trade in the area. It is the night before your first expedition that you've planned together. And some of you have some rumors, which you can share with others. But all of you have heard of a place nearby called the Mouth of Doom. It's said to be the most sure entry into the most legendary sunken ruin in all of Northern Albion called Rapanuthuk. So this is the night before your expedition. And you're here at Zelkor's Ferry. I'm going to tell you a couple of things that you have here. And then let you decide in the nighttime what you want to do in, in, as your final preparations. And you can kind of chat together and make plans. In Zelkor's Ferry, uh, the town itself, this tiny settlement, um, there is a boat dock. And currently there are no boats that have docked this evening. A stable, a blacksmith, a barracks where the, uh, the local landowner, Odo Bristleback, who's also the tavern keep, has hired some permanent mercenaries to guard the town. A trading post. An eccentric man named Ulman Dark, who uh, sits out on the edge of the swampy area near the... Uh, uh, that, that, that the, where the river is in between an island to the east. Um... And he trades in esoteric things. There's a gem cutter. Um, and that is all that this little town currently houses. And you're currently at the Bristleback Inn. And in the Bristleback Inn, several other people are traveling through. One person sitting by themselves has weapons, a backpack, water skins. Uh, it looks like he himself has come in here for similar reasons. Um, and then you see three women sitting with a man, all of the women wearing uh, habits, uh, but otherwise also traveling canes and walking sticks and backpacks. And you can even see some of you can tell that they are carrying weapons. Uh, and then a man who's also wearing robes. Those are the only patrons that you currently see in here other than um, Odo Bristleback himself, who you have arranged to, to take a table from. And each of you will need to spend... Uh, does anybody lack a gold piece? 
Nope. Yeah, I already spent all mine. Then for food and housing for the day, uh, you will uh, be in the debt of Odo Bristleback. We'll expect I to be paid. I, I can I can pay his wow. his thing. I got a little bit extra. Oh, nice. All right. So I'll take care of him. All right. Oh, thanks. Yeah. This uh this this takes care of uh, your room and board entirely uh, for the day. Is one gold piece. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, that's where you are. What do you want to do? Think, Have any uh, of you heard rumors that lead to places other than the Mouth of Doom? Can't say that I have. No, no, I don't know too much about this part of the world at all. Those uh, travelers, though, they seem like they're well prepared. Those uh, those ladies and and that uh, that guy over there with the backpack, you know, points to the one who came in. The traveler we noticed first says, uh, uh, "Folger, you're better with your words than I am. Maybe you could uh, ask them if they've got an interest in our business." We could use more seasoned hands, you know. I agree. I'll um, get the attention of Odo Bristleback and ask if he knows anything about any of these other travelers, if they've just come in, if any of them seem like bad news. Let's see. Um, Odo is an unusually hairy man, uh, having hair that comes out of places that is, this doesn't even make sense, um, <laughs> from his clothes and everything, just hair everywhere. Uh, and he's kind of stout. Um, and, um, I'm sorry, what did you ask him again? Any of the travelers, um... If he knows anything about these travelers who have just come in, and if any of them in particular are bad news. Sir, I don't let people in here if they're bad news. Oh. Good to know. Mm. Well, I'll try not to, anyway. laugh. As far as I know, about as bad news as you lot look. Ah. Uh, we're not bad news. There's no need to worry about that. We're here to spend our gold and drink. Oh, Nothing not more. Worried. And, uh... Yeah. And he brings um, you out some more food. Okay, oh. Bainta leans over the table to his friends and he says, uh, I don't know what you all think about whether we should be talking about this uh, mouth of death or doom or whatever the hell it is. Maybe we shouldn't be... Uh, Maybe we should just keep it a bit quiet. Not go telling everybody what we're what we're up to. Next thing you know, we'll come back loaded down with gold and you're gonna get a knife in the back. But I don't I know, think that's what I do. That's wise, but on the other hand, anyone who's come out here in the middle of winter and made this trip is probably knows what they're looking for already. Even those bloody nuns. I'd, uh... Wouldn't hold that to the I'd, face. I'd risk a knife ropes. in the... I, I'm not so worried about a knife in the back from those nuns. Ah, uh, it's true. Well, let's go see what they're up to, then. I'll just stand up and just waltz over, beer in hand. I'm okay with anybody else coming. I just boom, slam my slam my uh, beer down on the table, sloshes a little bit, and just sit down next to them. But what are you ladies up to? Oh no! Uh, what's your charisma modifier? Uh, I've got fifteen Go charisma. Oh wow! Oh nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm very <clears throat> yeah. I'm gonna uh, stick back at the table because I don't have very good charisma. I'm gonna gotta keep to myself. <laughs> When, uh, he's very open. Like I've got it. Like he's uh, he he's he looks like he's a happy, charming yeah. kind of guy. He's like exudes confidence. Yeah, yeah. Not threatening. 
Um, when you slam your mug down, uh, it sloshes, and uh, it splashes onto the the front of one of the nuns. Um, Oops. The uh, the nuns uh, kind of ha look off like I don't know how to put this, but you know, sh sh shame shamingly, like you know, like yeah. not looking at you. But the man, the old man, he he says. Now look, uh, now look, friend. We we don't want any trouble or anything. Um, I uh, uh, he he thinks that you're like threatening him or something. Even you know, like he seems a little nervous. Oh, I, 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 um, there's no threat here. I just came over to talk. You're a curious looking bunch. Um, uh, he kind of shrugs. I uh, he tries to wipe. Like probably not in a very, it's probably not very uh, <laughs> oh, no. great. But he like tries to wipe the beer right. off of her, and he's like, uh, well, "I'm not much for politeness or or doing doing things the right way." But there's nothing to worry about with me. I'm just come over to talk. You're a curious looking bunch, is all, is all, and oh, I thought curious. I'd ask what you're up to. Well, the light uh, it needs it needs its uh, its rays. Spread even here into the borders of Albion. Oh, oh you serve the light. Oh, do you you come up and you say that when you hear? Yeah, he oh, hears that. He's like, and... "Oh, I, I serve the light." And then the man is like, ah, you know, um, and you can tell that the man is not—he's not a uh, clergyman. Uh, any of the clerics can tell that. Um, but uh, one of the nuns say, um. Then, then the servants of the light are already here. Like one of the women turns to you and says that. Turns to, yeah. uh, turns yes. to, uh, yeah, to, uh, Caden. Um. Yes, the light has sent us. Um, one of them has this crazy look in her eye. And uh, she has a scar on her face. And she says, Then you know our work here. We oppose the darkness. We come here only to banish chaos back into the winter from where it comes. Nice. Uh, don't we all? It, Bentha makes a sign, like whatever the sign of the one god is. Yeah. Um, it's, he doesn't do it very well, but he does know it. And he says, um, I follow the one god myself. Um... He says, it's an honor to speak to you all. Um, not to priest myself, but I, uh, well, there's uh, nothing, feels nothing better than smashing in the skull of someone who's following the dark, doesn't it? Um, the uh, the old man, he, he looks kind of reticent. He's like, ah, you know, we we just got in and uh, of course <laughs> we'd like to chat. And but then one of the women is like, uh, kind of interrupts him and uh, looks at, at you and then turns to, back to Caden and is like then you go to Rapanathic I never heard of such a thing oops Caden oh uh, no 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 I, I don't know what that is no we're just here uh, d just uh, just drinking But what's this Rapanathic? What do you what do you know? Uh, I keep hearing something, but uh, I tell us something about you burn. It? And by the way, this is about July first, so it's high adventure tide is the net season. What's high high summer? Um, and so uh, she says, you waste the days of summer in drink when you could be improving yourself and facing the truth. And she turns back to Jaden. She says. We go to Rapanothic to face either mm -hmm. our doom or the doom of the servants of chaos. Those well, will be the two ends that come. Where is the, uh, the entrance to this place? And uh, she says, uh, "I have. We have heard that if we travel to the sea coast and continue, we'll find a mausoleum there. And there, somewhere, we'll find our descent." into the wicked earth and beat Ooh. back chaos into the dark. And um, uh, she has this like crazy zealous look in her eye. Um, and now, quick aside to a mechanic, I forgot to mention this in the rules, 
as a West Marches game, I don't. We only have two hours. What do I want to spoil about this? Rapanothic is more than it's more than several dozens worth of levels of dungeon. There is no way that any person could ever explore that in a number of two-hour games. And so, the game mechanic works like this. Anytime you find a new rumor, you have it, and you can explore it next time. Or if you find it in the wilderness. So you just let me know when you form an expedition, I want to go find the mausoleum. And I'm like, roger that, and I'll pre prepare it. Alternate, Love it. Alternately, if you're in a dungeon level and you find an entrance to another level, you have it. So long as you can tell me later... Hey, I go down this corridor, I turn right, I go 20 feet, and then there's a room, and on the other side of the room, there's stairs. Okay, and then you go straight to that level. And you can lead uh, so an expedition there. In video game terms, my journal tab just started glowing, clicked on it, and I'm like, oh, I can go to the mouth mausoleum. of doom, or I have the lost yeah. mausoleum. But not like, tonight, because we only have two right. hours. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's exciting. I like that. Okay. So they said they're going to the lost mausoleum, right? Not the mouth of doom. Right. Is that what they said? Okay. Yeah. Um, from what you've heard of the Mouth of Doom, uh, you've heard that it's the only reliable way in. That if you try to make it into Rapanothic in some other way, it's deadly. Well, that sounds like a worthy cause. I'm, uh, maybe that's the reason why we're here after all. But, uh, well, maybe we'll see you out on the road then somewhere. Yes, good luck, sisters. The light shine upon you all, the, the like zealous one, uh, says to you. And, um, okay, so the night is passing on. Does anybody want to try to uh, buy or sell anything, talk to an NPC, or try to hire or gather a rumor? Um, is it too late to speak to the, the well-prepared-looking backpack adventurer? Sure. Before we... Is your intention to try to hire him or just talk to him and gather information? Just if, if he is worth hiring, I'd like to hire him. Someone who looks well prepared is a good sign in my book. All right. Um, you go over to uh, this person, and yeah, they do look well prepared. He also, man, the roles for this. Uh, he also has this suspicious look, uh, or not suspicious. He looks at you suspiciously. Uh, everyone that has come here has perhaps been through a lot. Um, and... He, it, it, people here are not very trusting in your experience so far. Um, and he says, uh, well met, traveler. Well met indeed. Do you make for the, do you make for the mound in the wilds or somewhere else? Well, uh... All of us are here for the wilds for one purpose or another. What uh, what business do you have out here in the in the forest of hope? Bolstering numbers, seeking an entrance to the. What is Rapanothic? Do we know anything about it? Everyone has heard of Rapanothic. Rapanothic okay. is the most legendary dungeon in probably cool, cool. that you've ever heard of. Cool. We we seek to bolster our numbers and find entry into Rapanothic. Ah, like that suicidal crusade over there. I wouldn't say we're seeking death. Oh. Something else there. That's what I've heard. What's your uh, charisma modifier? I don't know my modifier, but it's 17. 17? Ooh, that's a plus. It's the only stat I've got. <laughs> uh, well, I don't remember. Oh, yeah, actually, this one has a narrow bonus. That's what, that's what it is. <laughs> Yeah, unless it's the strength for a fighter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so, um, anyways, um, he says, "Well, I." Uh, he looks over to your crew and he says, "What do you know about the the entrance to that place?" We know where to find one. It's supposed to be safe on the way in, but we don't know what we'll find there. I see. Well, I think that will do better truth is I am here for that purpose as well my companions died on our journey here I thought about you have my condolences oh well condolences are nice and all but gold would be better that's going to be the only way that any of us make it out of Zelkor's ferry is enough gold to make it on one of those boats 
none of us are going to make it back alive across Overland. I'll take your word for it. I didn't quite plan that far ahead. That's not my area of the logistics. I'll lend my help. I have no other crew, uh, no other uh, party to, to, to go with. But I expect to be treated equally and fairly in an equal share. You have experience in places like this, then? I don't think anyone who's ever come out of this place has an experience with a place like this. Well, yeah. you're honest. <laughs> I'll take that. He strikes me as the kind of guy we need. We leave at dawn tomorrow. If you want to share, you'll be ready to go when we are. So be it. Sleep on it. I've already got my room. Um, I'll be ready at sunrise. And gets up. And Look away. forward to seeing you then. What can we call you? Flanagan. What's your name? Folger. A pleasure. He shakes your hand. Great. All right. Let's be on our way. All right. The night passes. And you sleep in your modest Spartan accommodations at the Bristleback Inn. And you awaken at sunrise. Zelkor's ferry is covered in mist. Everyone's about their work today. Mists have rolled in from the summer, the humid air across the, the riverfront. The gate to the city is to the west, and uh, no boats have come in to the ferry. Are those women out and about with their the guy? Uh, it looks like they've already departed. Okay. Probably they had their matins. Probably woke some of you with their singing, and then they uh, and then they departed while it was still dark. Okay. Wolfwyn will uh, spend a little extra time in the kitchen this morning. It's been a long walk to get here, uh, and he wants to stock up on any bread crusts and. Uh, you know, ale that's a bit past its prime that uh, <laughs> the locals will share with him for breakfast. Uh, he'll pay a little extra silver if, if need be. He's uh, not not that well-traveled, but he does know the value of having a good breakfast before you go out on a long day of hiking. All right. Um, so you, uh, you can consider oh. that part of your um, gold piece as part of the adventure, you know, for a room and board. Uh, but Excellent. you can also purchase... Um, uh, standard rations from which is the stock price from Sword and Wizardry if, if you want more. Alright, he's got a week worth of, he's got a week worth of rations uh, you know, again, I'm sure it's a lot of hard tech and bread crust but um, he's he's awake early enough and I envision that uh, he wants to do sort of a, a blessing over the group before we actually set out uh, he's not exactly um Oh, he's not he's not a clergyman of any standing. He's not really even a clergyman, but uh he's got he's he's got he's got a knack, you know? He's got kind of an understanding of like uh the proper way of things, the the ebb and flow of spiritual sure. currents and right. feels like setting us all up before we go would be a nice thing to do. Okay. Is that something that you wanna you wanna do or are you just are you saying you're doing I, that? I think we're just going to say he does okay. it. I just like it as a visual. Yeah, totally. You do that. Um, and uh, actually, one, two, three, four, five. I, uh, I forgot to do this at the beginning, too. I'm going to use my D5. Oh, cool. Actually, D5. I was going to buy some rations, too. I'm just looking it up right now. I thought I had some. But... Yeah, you can... If you guys are missing rations, I'm happy to spot them for you so we can get on the road for now, and we can sort that out later. Oh, okay. That's fine. Yeah, and, uh, no, no problem at all. Sorry, right, cool. No worries. I'll call on you as the group caller. Um, who's who's up? Uh, you, I'll, I'll call on you as the group caller. So the, oh, me? Yeah, so what you do okay. basically is uh, it allows me just to focus on the game and the world, and then uh, my goal is to step back and not to, um, not to get involved with any planning or decision making. You'll just you'll you'll listen for a group consensus and then you know try to build a consensus and then say all right I think we do this you know all right. the, 
All right, cool. and then um, okay, so departing the gate. Uh, I like this. Cool. Let's see. It's a, uh, a misty day. This is about three miles of visibility. You can see as you depart the gate to the west, the mists of the riverfront are all around behind you. And even laying in this river valley here, in this small peninsula that's sticking out into the river, uh, the eastern sea is only a few miles to the east. And you can see just above or, or, or ahead of you as you depart the gate to, to your left, you can see a hill just slightly rising up uh, out, up above the mist. What do you do? Do we happen to what? know what yeah. direction is best to head in? I should know. You do. You've heard about the Mouth of Doom. You've heard that it's south of here. Okay. Looking around and uh, Faintha says, Caden, remember where those ladies, they were going to a different place, the mausoleum. They were going to go along the water. I can't remember if they said north or south. Do you remember what they said? Or south or south. west? Yeah, me either. Water. I recall south. If you're keeping notes. Ah, uh, you keep notes. I love how you keep notes, Martin. Folger. Yeah. You're a smart one that way. Some of these got you. I'm actually sure I am. Maybe maybe average. So to the south then, I guess, is it? Maybe we should go uh, mount that hill and see what we can see from the top. Might not be a bad idea. That's a good idea, yeah. Yeah, must be nice knowing how the right. I never needed to write myself, but that's uh, it's good to have someone around like you, Folger. I don't you thought of me. Nice. Uh, all right, John. Which way do we go? No. Right. The down. Okay, this way. You go this way. All right. Um, yep. you, it takes you. You travel for uh, ten or twenty minutes into the mist. Um, it starts to become lightly forested here at the base of the hill. You can see the hill jutting up. A, a rocky reek common here to the northern wildlands, uh, the borderlands, and you come to the the banks of the of the river, um, and then several things happen. Uh, let me see here. Is there a trail that we're following along here? Uh, this is not the trail that you all came in. Uh, the the trail. Okay. I, I guess I should have noted that. You did come in from land, I would say. Actually, it makes sense that, yeah, I think you would have came by, no, probably not land. You probably would have come by boat. So you would have arrived in Zelkor's Ferry by boat. Um, so yeah, there's no trail here. This is just a wild, undeveloped space. Uh, and then a couple of things. First thing that happens is, uh, let's see, Folger, or actually, let's do Dolanite, roll a uh, D6. This mat is Jor Ardrin. Jor. Roll a D6. Two, okay. Um... Uh, you are uh, walking along. It's it's kind of wet out, um, just from the humidity and uh, it being kind of marshy here next to the uh, next to the waterfront. And you suddenly step and lose your footing and fall into a lower area of brush here on the bank of the river. And um, our absolutely surrounded um is there are a pit of vipers here oh boy oh god god slip it had to be snakes 
snakes. Why do you have these snakes? Should have asked for the marching order too. Um, we all, we we all fell, or well, starting with uh, just Jor. Here we go. Jor is kind of in the lead, and I'll say it's kind of right okay. here. And then you are walking, and and you have the uh, you have the the river bank over here. Uh, is cool. everybody able to see on this map? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I need to fix yep. your vision when we get to if we survive this. Let's say, <laughs> and. Uh, and then, if we a TPK on this, th it would be epic. Like honestly, I think that'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's like hey, next stash new characters. <laughs> would like... That would be hilarious. Now they're surprised. You're surprised. Everybody's surprised. Um, and I've got that there are. It's an entire pit of them. Um, oh boy, that sounds terrible. I thought you were just gonna like uh, turn your ankle or something, and be embarrassed. Guess not. Uh. That's not the D and D way. <laughs> and they're all kind of clumped together. There's just a, a bunch of them there. Um, let's see here. Oh my god, this looks terrible. Oh my god. Get those poison saving throws ready. Ash, uh, very dangerous. You go first. You're the one with your foot in there with them. Yeah, I know, right? Looking for my Jeez. snakes. Oh, and do we have the the backpacker with us? I forgot his name. Yes. Flanagan? Um, yeah, Flanagan uh, as a company. Flanagan. You all. Okay. Okay, I've got a better trick for this. Oh, Flanagan. Oh, Lanigan. Is it Flanagan or Lanigan? F or L? F as in Foxtrot. Gotcha. Try this. Good. Okay. And uh, let's see. The first thing I always ask this with this type of combat is like, don't worry about anything else. Everybody's surprised, so everybody's on equal footing. The first thing is, what's the plan? Stunts, plans, ideas. You know, that's the most important thing. I, I think. Action off the top, and just then declaring retreats and spells up the top of the list. Oh, well, Jor is going to plan on falling back as best as he can, and. Uh, attacking with his bow, if if possible. Okay. Snakes aren't too territorial. If we can get you out, you might. Right. Maybe they'll just leave us alone. I mean, they are territorial, but like single-digit feet territorial, not people right. running away right. chasing right. Right. territorial. Right. Yeah, I think Bainta just wants to grab. Like you fell, and he's like. Whoops! And goes tries to would immediately want to just get you out of whatever hole it is, and yeah. then seeing snakes like just get let's get you out of there and swatting at snakes and and retreating I guess at first if we can take them out it's fine but yeah rescuing you is the top priority for Bainta at least. Cool. All right. I'll call Flanagan well, to get a light a torch. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, All I right. think Caden's probably gonna get out of sling. Uh, Wolf one's gonna get out of sling too. All right, so a bunch of people get out their slings to try to, like, beat these things off. And then um, uh, and then uh, Jay, uh, I'm sorry, Bantha, you, uh, you, you, uh, you're you going to go try to help Jor and try to pull him out of this pit, just get yeah. him out of there. Can I grab my so hand? Yeah. I, I think what I'm going to do is reduce that to a saving throw. Um, and basically, if you pass that saving throw, you won't have to worry about the evasion part. As far as, uh, like, is the snake going to leap out and try to bite? Gotcha. So, uh, uh, Bantha, you can make a saving throw. Okay, to help uh, to get him out in time. Okay, so this yeah. is just a d20 roll, right? Yep, to beat um, your saving throw number. Right, and my saving throw number is, uh, where's my character sheet here? A sec. Well, I'll just roll it and see what I get here. Roll 1d20, no bonuses. A 19 should do it. 19. Eight. Yeah, so you, you start to slide down in this pit, and these, this viper like raises up, and you just got a bed of vipers down below you. Um, uh, and uh, 
Jor. And so, um, Bantha comes up and just like pulls you up, like kicking out away from this thing, and drags you out as the snake like comes up, and then they fall back into the pit. He by the back of my collar, yanks me out. Cool. I think Bantha's like pretty, like he's wearing this. He's, he might have thrown off his backpack to do that. I don't know, but he's wearing a lot of stuff and he's startlingly quick. Um, like he, he fell, he was like, get out of there. And he's like pulling you out, like, nice. wrenching your arm to get you out. Um, kicks at this kicks at a snake as it's like coming up and get, get back, get back. Nice. That, yeah. uh, that works. And the snakes do not follow you out of the pit. That is their territory. Awesome. Uh, Yay. Yeah. Good job. All right. By the holy light, boy. Watch your step, Dolanite. Or Jor. Jor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, he peeks over the edge and looks down. Like, I don't know if it's possible, like, if it's too dangerous or whatever, but if he can look without getting uh, too close, um, he'd like to look down, like, if there's a... I don't know, just to see how many there are. Maybe there's, like, a body with a crown <laughs> down there. <laughs> yeah, or a bunch of nuns. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> a bunch of nuns. Yeah, dead nuns. <laughs> There's uh there's yeah there's no bodies down there thankfully yeah okay well mark this is a place not to go nope I'll watch my step a little bit a little bit better in the future sorry about that he uh, he actually like grabs a stick and like cuts off the top and goes and sticks a puts a stick in the ground um in front of it um for next time he says way back yeah smart thinking good idea. And if we don't have any luck on our other adventures, we can tell people that was the mouth of doom. <laughs> yeah. Right. And charge them. Three seconds, I'll just run the bathroom. All right. Uh, what do okay. you say we uh, crest this Matt hill? I don't know if we could get above the fog or not, but... Uh, or should we continue along the... I mean, it's supposed to be to the south, but it doesn't seem that far to get up that hill. It's only been about 20 minutes. I figure another 20 would be get to the top of that hill and see something, maybe. Wolfwin uh, likes the idea, but instead of just confirming it with you, he starts off on a light jog and is like, I'll race you to the top. Oh, Christ. <laughs> and he, he, he starts he starts coming after you. <laughs> Wolfwin doesn't go breakneck or anything. Just enough for uh, just enough for a little morning exercise, you know. But, Watch uh, your yeah. wedding by the gods. <laughs> I'll, I'll let the gods watch my footing for me. They're better at it. About that, he says to himself. Bring the light. <laughs> so, so who said that they they charged up the hill? It was. Uh... It, it was me. Uh, yeah, okay. it was Wolfwin. Uh, okay. It's not. It's not like a blind charge. It's just yeah. a little like playful morning exercise. You know what I mean? But yeah, um, yeah. Uh, make a uh, a saving throw. All oh, right. God, there you go. <laughs> oh, no, no, Good no, choice. Never. Well, that's a 10. All right. Oh, no. So not oh, a no. success. Oh, no. Okay. The next thing, then, is to roll a d6. Okay. Uh, that's, a, that's a three. Three. Okay. Well, uh, you start running up the hill. Ha, ha, ha. You know, like a competition and stuff. And then, like, you something else is running exactly the opposite way. And you stop and you look at each other. And there's this creature that you run just smack, dead smack into. Um, and uh, at the, at the, before you crest the top of the hill. Um, oh, oh. We're learning lessons quick here. <laughs> just like, Love it. Such a bunch of idiots running through the woods. <laughs> <laughs> This is great. Let's see. Yeah. So, um, uh, let's see. Wolfwin is this one right here. And then mm -hmm. who's chasing after Wolfwin or was talking to him before? Betha's right on his tail and okay. telling him to be careful. I'll probably be right behind them. I only have nine movement, though, so I, I might not. I might be falling behind. I'm not sure. Damn, um, here. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. That's pretty bad anyway, not bad. Let's see, and then... Uh... Missing something. Oh, here it is. 
uh, there's this uh, this humanoid figure. Um, and then as you get closer, you can see uh, several of them at the top of the hill. And I... Um... Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, doing some campsite type activities at the top of the hill. Um, and he's wearing and he's some wearing kind of, kind of old brigandine okay. that, he, that he's taken from um, presumably some person uh, that, that they've killed. You can They're just wearing scraps of armor and things that look like they've taken from people. And uh, he's surprised and they start to, it starts to gibber in some like canine-like language. Like, ah, 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 and then raises its spear towards you. <laughs> What's on? Yeah, I, uh... <clears throat> Alright. So, uh, Wolfwind's got a shield strapped to his back, so the first thing he'll do is he'll yeah. raise up his shield, uh, and then he'll start backing down the hill. Uh, he's got a, a war hammer, uh, also, I'm sure, slung around his back, so that'll probably come off with the shield, but we'll, we'll take these steps backwards, but he's definitely got a retreating posture. Does anybody speak any interesting languages? Nope. No? Okay. Just common. I can barely speak common. Long yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it looks like it, like he... Um, let me see if this actually is to scale correctly. Yeah, it is. Um, he starts to yell towards his companions who all start to grab their weapons. Um, I'm, I'm going to shout... Monkey, I'm going to shout back down the hill. Uh, Noel's... I mean, assuming I know what these are. Um, you probably if I... don't know what it is. It's uh, You've probably okay. never seen anything like this. It's definitely not a human. Uh, sure. It's some kind of beast creature. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll revise that. And then Wolf, Wolfwin just sort of makes his way back down and says, There's beastmen on the hill! And, uh, again, makes his way backwards, not turning his back to them retreating uh the best that he can as quickly as he can okay getting back down them? towards the group huh and that... from can we see them from our position or are we are they like up in the fog and through the trees no yeah as you look you can see figures uh it's not actually that far to the top of the hill as you guys were walking and in that right. amount of time you're able to um you're able to you know, wolfland comes back and everybody catches up and now you're about uh 40 feet away from each other the Do these things look field. bigger than a person? Uh, no, I wouldn't say so. Um, uh, but Bainta, is, Bainta puts his shield away and uh, draws his short bow. I think he's got a short bow, and uh, is has his is, is like pointing his arrow and just says, "Let's get back, let's get back, back down the hill." And uh, he'll actually just lo loose an arrow and see if he can dissuade them a little bit. Okay. Um... Make a roll a d6 for initiative. Okay. I'm not trying to engage them. I'm just trying to, uh, I don't know, show that we're forced to be reckoned with, I suppose. But whatever, that's that's what I'm trying. That doesn't necessarily mean that's what happens. I rolled a four. I one Good. Roll. Okay. Um, yeah, so you, you let loose an, an arrow, and what is the plan? Uh, is it to also run away, bravely run away? Or is it to, to fight him? Wolfwind's body language has... Uh, he's obviously spooked. Uh, he thinks that, uh, you know... he You can tell by the way he came down that hill as quickly and as cautiously as he did that he wants to get out of here. But however you decide to interpret that, that's totally fine. He's not going to run away uh, if, if uh, you know, the rest of you don't. So, What's everyone else want to do? Sorry, I should... John, I should, I should let you do this. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Yeah, what does everybody else want to do? I was thinking run away as well, but... I'm not sure we'll outrun them if we try. Yeah, I'm, We're I'm, I'm pretty heavily away. set up. I would say we beat a fighting retreat, and if they approach, we give them a volley of missiles on the way in, and then take it as it comes. But if they don't yeah. want to chase us, that sounds like a good camp. Idea. Yeah, I like that plan. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a good idea. I think Fol Folger and... Is it Folger or Folger? Folger, I guess. Okay, Folger and Bainter are both, like, fighters. You, you said you were also previously in, like, some kind of army or something, right? 
This is I think like, that's just backstory. Yeah, I think that's how I became a fighter. Yeah, yeah. So like we're both. This is kind of like our. I think our Bainta is like um, is like, yeah. We can retreat, but don't run. Don't panic. We don't want our backs to them. Retreat with a face them, face them, and uh, if they come on, throw it, throw everything you got at them first. We can't panic and just start running because then we don't know what's going to hit us from behind. All right. Well. The incredible, and someone has a movement rate of three or less, right? Like they have the the lower movement rate. Um, oh, I, I have movement nine. So I think 12. I'm on nine as well. Yeah, I have, a, I have a four. You got a four. yeah. That's twelve. Oh wow. Okay. I think I don't think we're below nine. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I think nine is the basic. I think people just it, had very high expectations low. for their carry weight. <laughs> I my uh, the alternate character I made uh, had uh, encumbrance problems because he was a, a fighter with a low strength. But uh, well, maybe I fine. maybe I did mine wrong because I have four. I don't know. Is it oh, four movement it? squares on your character sheet? So yes. the, the so yeah, it's the twelve. You're good. Oh, oh, yeah. okay, okay. So the there's a slight discrepancy if you like downloaded the PDF for um like the Swords and Wizardry PDF. Oh, the okay. The, the yeah, PDF so on roll 20, they calculate it, they, they display it just a little bit different, but... Gotcha, all right. Um, so, okay, so this is kind of a cool uh, example. I'm learning the difference between BX and Swords and Wizardry, for example, here is... Um, it just says it's up to me to decide, <laughs> which I like. Um, but I actually like how BX does it, but I'm going to kind of tweak it. So here's the good news. This is actually, I, I thought someone was a lot heavier. And that's really good news, and it just goes to show how being heavy can be life or death. Because yeah. uh, you are not so. I'm what I'm hearing you say is everybody's got a movement rate of nine or better, right? No one's got more than um, right. 100 pounds of equipment. So because of that, you can tell as they start to organize, they get their stuff, they start to make um, ye yipping animal-like noises, bestial noises, and they just start to rush down the hill. And you're confident that if you start to just back away as like a phalanx, they will be on you and you will fight. Alternate, alternately, you have the speed, same speed to where you can try to get away, but there will be a chance that the the person in the two people in the rear will make a save to see if they uh, if they enter one round of combat. So so there is a chance that you could just break ranks and flee and just get out of here, or you're almost certainly going to be in combat. I feel like the natural thing in this situation would be to, for us to run. And yeah. To run and yeah, I'm not sure we should take on something that seems well yeah. equipped. Are right. they. Do they have spears? Did, we, did it seem like they had spears? Uh, they do. They have spears. Uh, you can see that they have that. And uh, you can see. Yes, that's what they have. I'm not sure that I love getting charged downhill by spearmen. No. Like two of us are in the back. That's that could be three people live, two people die, pretty easily. So you're saying running would be bad? Is a bad idea? Uh, no, I don't think it's a bad idea. I think they're both bad ideas, but not yeah. n through yeah. no fault of our own. <laughs> it's, it's a rough spot. I think running is the best bad idea. Yeah, I mean, I think I think Bainta, like, however you want to interpret this, uh, John, Caden. I think Bainta would want to stick to the plan because he's like this. He's, he's a mercenary. He's like, we, we do the thing. We're going to do what we said. We're going to we'll fire on them as they arrive. But if you all start to panic and run, then he's going to follow. So I, I think it, uh, I oh. think it's like uh, I'm I'm cool if you guys if everybody thinks you start running, then Bainta's just going to have to run too. So that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I think we have a good shot with a missile volley of getting of spooking them. They're not people don't like fighting to the death. Yeah. Even beast men, I would imagine. That's a guess, but that's my guess. Uh, yeah, yeah. Does Flanagan have a missile weapon of some kind? Um, yes, he has a he has a short bow. Okay, I think I think if we do a missile volley on their way in, we have a good shot of convincing them that they don't want to be in a fight. I like it. I'm not sure it'll work out that way, but that's my best guess. Yeah, I can like, imagine like some of you are like, let's get it, like let's get, we gotta run, run, and and we're like, no, hold the line, get your weapons ready. It's not like you know, just like you met, you see in um, combat movies. I don't, I've never been in the military or anything like that, but it's like 
we're telling you to don't run. If you run, we're screwed. Fire, get ready to fire. And just like, we're, and we're trying to hold our ground here and keep you guys together, yep. like cohesive unit. <laughs> I think mm -hmm. yeah, seeing seeing the fighter and the pilot and just both like you know they're, like they 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 just get get the ice water in their veins that calms calms down Wellwin and he'll take out his sling. Yeah, yeah, we'll just, just hit him. And we know you can hit him, and we're just like just waiting. Yeah, Caden pulls a sling. Maybe one of you hey. all can help me. In BX, you cannot fire on someone with, if they're less than five feet. Um, is that the same here? I can't remember. Oh, that is up to you. Out. The rules are ambiguous in OD&D &D about it. firing into melee or anything like that. Okay. So I'm not going to do it then. I, you do you do what you like. I love it. I'm already I'm already loving this. Okay, yeah, we don't need to do that then. Yeah, okay, so they take their turn and they move and they're screaming and there's this like band of bestial people that are running down at you with spears to attack and uh, it is your all's turn. Uh, spells okay. or um, retreats or anything. Um, oh, there is something in here that, I, I, like, I don't. I, I, maybe we moved on, but it says when using missiles to attack into a melee, it is usually not possible to choose which. If you're hitting an opponent or friend, the referee will determine this randomly. That's not the case right now, but no, yeah, that's that is cool. See. Yeah, mm. I like that kind of language. This is like the the big boy old school, where it's like, all right, yeah. just kind of yeah. yeah. Okay, so all right. Anyways, it's your turn. Uh, so any spells. No. Okay. Do we have spells? Not yet. I don't know if anybody right. has any. No, we're to, we're totally a bunch of a uh, bunch of goons, pretty right. much. Okay. Missile fire. Pretty cool. You read my mind. I'll, <laughs> I'll instruct Flanagan to fire his shot as they approach before they get into melee, if possible. Okay. Or we'll do the same. Caven yeah. will do the same thing. If you're firing we'll missiles, you can stone. just go ahead and roll for it. Okay. Uh, uh, I think we do this, right? Um... Oh yeah, baby. I'm going old school, guys. I've got like my character sheet. Oh, I think now. I rolled. It. Oh no, I got two attacks. That's right. Oh wow. Yeah, bows are oh, pretty strong. Okay. You fire ones at the start of the round and ones at the end. Right. I like so well. I did not know I that. I hit armor class nineteen. Seems solid. Feels pretty I solid. If you're doing movement simultaneous with missiles, Folger would like to move into the line with the other two guys so that we don't have. Yeah, actually, him, I don't him know. pretending his hand axe with a missile weapon. I, I could see yeah. other situations where like that the procedure makes sense, but in this case, I think you could you could do that. Uh, you could. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So. Um, uh, I'm up here. Flanagan uh, strikes one of them for two points of damage. Uh, did anyone else? Uh, what did, let's see. Did anyone hit ascending armor class 14? Or did I hit 19? All right. You all can roll for yeah. damage. Yep. Okay. I'm um, just double checking the damage bonus is nothing. And, so... and which ones are you targeting? Can you highlight them for me? Yeah. I'll go for this guy in the front here. This. That guy right there? Okay. Yeah. Go for this guy right here. Okay. I did three damage on the one bottom mm -hmm. left, bottom right. Okay. Thor did uh, two. All right. Yeah, I missed. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, any melee attacks? Is anybody in range to do melee? You want to do that? I yeah. am. I had a sling and... So is a sling, do I have to, like, de-equip a shield in order to use the sling? No, there, I don't, I, 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 no. Okay, then I, I had uh, basically set the warhammer in the grass, picked out the sling, thrown a stone, as soon as they close ranks, reach down, will pick up the warhammer. Is that allowed to make an attack in that way, or is that... Oh, you're doing like, a ranged attack on a melee attack on the same turn. Is that Which, possible? Well, in, in OSC, it doesn't say that you can't, but most people don't. Uh, and, sure. Uh, I, I figured it, it would be justified in this case because we're being charged, but if that doesn't fit the fiction or if that seems broken, then I'm fine to not do it too. So, whatever there, works. Does, does anybody know if it specifically says in the rules that you can't do that? Because actually, in OSC, it doesn't say that you can't. Most people don't. But I just had the rules open too. Oh, hold on. Uh, the... Um, 
initiative and order of battle. I think that what it is is you pick one, is, is the idea is. Uh, you can do movement and missile fire, uh, move, or you may fire a missile weapon. Actually, so I should have done that. And then melee combat and spells. Um, any melee attacks or spells. So I think... Uh, if I, I, I don't have to make an attack. Uh, just readying the Warhammer would feel good. Um, yeah. Or honestly, he can catch me by surprise too. I mean, yeah. Whatever, yeah. whatever no. fits the moment, you know. Yeah. No, I think I think it makes sense that that's the that's like the. It makes sense to me that you wouldn't be able to do both. You kind of pick one. Uh, okay. So, any other uh, melee attacks? All right. So they not reach us with their charge last turn. They did not. So that's where they made it on their oh. turn. And oh. Oh. So In that case, so I was here or here. One of these two. Uh, what is the distance of these squares? Five. Five feet. Okay. In that case, I'll I'll move the extra step forward and engage this one here. In melee. In the next round, okay. Um, I think I can move and attack this round. I think I might be close enough. Oh, I thought you used a, a, a missile weapon. Mm, not Folger. He's oh, got he's go got that it. sweet, sweet dex penalty. Yeah, you can't move it. and do a missile weapon, or can you? Uh, so you can... Um, you actually have to pick. It's sort of like... Um, oh, oh, so you can't move too, okay. Yeah, I know I said that, but... How's that? I like those rolls. I think yeah. that's where I was then. Oh, nat 20 with a damage of 8. You kill it. That's describe that's all my luck. Nice! All my luck at once. Yeah, describe Very what nice. it looks wow. like. Wow. Good. Describe what it looks like. Oh, uh... It looks like... I don't know. I, these things aren't that tall, right? Uh, no, they're not. Somebody lost head. He'll 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 batter down the the one up close and bellow, uh, something nasty. And are we doing alignment languages? Uh oh yeah totally. But it's kind of like uh like everyone who's religious that's lawful speaks like Latin, but it's not called Latin. And then you know, yeah. Okay. He'll 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 bellow a a war cry in the alignment language of law. All right. The, the ones that fight. remain. Yeah, um, and uh, all right. So one is dead, um, and they see that their friend is dead. Now, uh, okay. Let's see. All right, and then um, uh, ch -ch 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 Bantha roll uh, a d6 for initiative. I'll re -roll that. What'd you get? You're muted. A two. A two. Um, Reroll it. Okay. Oh, no. Five. Five. Okay, they go first. Um, uh oh. Let's see. They are going to uh, start fighting. Uh, so they move into melee um, to the nearest targets. Um, oh my god, here we go. Two of them are going to attack Wolflin. Oof. Oops. <laughs> Oof. Oh, that can't be good. That's uh, two hits. Okay. Uh, and they can do a bite, or they have a D10 weapon. That's so much for the really the joyful good. race up the hill, <laughs> right? Uh, you take eight points of damage. Uh, All right. Well, I, I, a wolf one, uh, I think, is just solidly impaled through the gut on a spear. Uh, just, like, right out through oh, the back no. of the spine. And uh, oh, no. <laughs> just coughs blood up. And just says, oh, maybe I should have watched where I was going. A little <laughs> more not, closely. <laughs> I'm not dead yet. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, he's, he's super dead. <laughs> no. All right, the next one misses. And then... That one hits for... Oh, no. Folger, you take four points of damage. Okay. And it's your turn. You all can... What's the plan? Well, so have we wounded just one of them at this point? One of them's We've... dead, one of them's wounded, and three are fighting. Okay, yeah, well, ba I think Bainta is... Uh, it's... Uh... He just like sees sees what's his name fall beside him. I don't even don't even be able to, Wolf <laughs> fall beside him, and he's just like yeah, and he he lets out some curse 
I think he was ready to drop his bow. I think his sword is laying right there in his shield. He picks up his shield and just and just starts uh, laying into them. All right. Uh, all right. So we're fighting. That sounds good. Is that, I mean, is that everybody yep. wants to fight now? Yep. All right. Um, so, I don't think we can get away now. Yeah. I'll, I'll instruct Flanagan to join us in the melee if he can. All right. He uh, he does that. So let's see. They move. Um. Oh, I didn't. Let me just create one. Wow. <laughs> oh boy. I did roll for him, so he did, he did get an attack last last round. So any movement this turn? Yeah, Cave Caven's gonna move up and, and attack. All right, and then uh, missiles and. Spells. I'm just gonna drop my drop my sling and pull out my uh, hammer. So sounds like we're entering into melee. All right, everybody can move their tokens yep. and do the melee attack. Why? Why am I in there twice? I'm confused. Oh, I created a. Uh, let, let me actually create a uh, a different thing here. Uh, I created a, a token so that there would be a uh, Flanagan token, but I'll, I'll create a different one. There we go. Okay. Here's, here's <laughs> go to, I don't want to be uh, up that close. No. <laughs> I missed. All right. As did I. I assume. All right. The Anybody six. hit uh, armor class fourteen? Oh no! Is it time to try to hit? Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I Bainta is definitely is going to hit, but he's also going for like serious intimidation. Like he's he's yeah. screaming and he's just like yeah, and um, trying to show that they're like we're superior. Bainta is just really angry. He's gonna, he's gonna move over here. Oh, killed my friend. I hit armor class twelve. My first one missed. Oh yeah, my second one hit. Now I'm attacking the same one that I was before with the red dot on it that you put on there. All right. He is now dead. Uh, Flanagan also attacked that one. There are three remaining, uh, and it's their turn. Um, and uh, let's see, on their turn, they're going to do their morale check now that uh, a good portion of them are dead. And they, uh, they passed. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. And uh, we're for the let's see, <laughs> they're gonna attack Folger. This one right here is uh, oh, yes, it missed. And then this one's Luck gonna for attack me this time, Caden missed. And then this one's gonna attack, yeah, um, uh, Flanagan miss. Sweet, okay. So, um, Caden, roll a d6 for initiative. I didn't roll it in chat last time. I will this time. All right, you guys go first. Nice. Yay. If everybody's attacking, just go ahead and roll your attack and let me know if you beat Armour okay. Class 14. Attacking. If you're doing something I hit. else, let me know. I roll. see 14 for 8. I know. Whichever one is if, closest to me. If I attack into, um, if I range attack in the melee, that could be dangerous. That's true. I hit if the one I in front of me for two. Okay. The one in front of Bantha? Bantha? Oh, wait, what Darby did in front of me? Yeah. There's I only two left. left then. So I hold off and see what you guys do first and see. Yep. All right. I hit, I hit the one in front of Bantha. How much uh, damage? Wait till everybody else goes. Two. two damage. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so two of them are now wounded. Um,. All right, I'll target the one above, which would be Wolfen. On the side? Okay. Yeah, that the one sense. to the north of Wolfen. All right. Go for okay, it. Let me go ahead and hopefully I don't You're miss. You're doing a ranged attack? Yeah. I might hit our, our buddy there, playing again. If I miss. Oh, it misses. Oh, first one misses, second one looks like it hits, but maybe. Oh, you have two attacks? Yeah, with the bow, you oh, yeah. One at the start of the round, one at the end. That's yeah. wild. I didn't know that. That's awesome. Just a bow. Is oh, those are nuts. Too, or? <laughs> Very scary. Just a bow. I did not okay. see that, but I love it. Okay. Yeah, yeah but I, I missed the first time, so there's a chance it might hit um, Wolfen, I think, maybe, right? Uh, oh, Wolf, Wolfen's dead. Oh, Wolfen's dead? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's off. Oh, okay, now. never mind then. So I'm, now I'm safe attacking that guy. So he takes two, two points. Okay. All right. Uh, it's. Let's see. Their turn. All right, you guys went first, so it's their turn again. And uh, 
the first thing they're going to do, they're really terrified now, and they uh, fail their morale check. Run away! And they're going to attempt to flee uh, and drop their weapons and just run. Nice. Um... George shoot at the one that he was shooting that for as it runs away. What's that? Can George shoot at the one that he just shot at as it runs away? Okay, they make it up to the top of to the side of the oh, okay. here. That's kind of where they make it. All right, so uh, yeah, they're still close enough, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna roll it in chat. Um, uh, more. Folger, you can roll a d6 for initiative. Okay, that'll be the last time I roll initiative. Oh, let's see you guys tied. Yeah, okay, I'll roll again. Should I roll again as well? Um, yeah, roll again. And by the way, you all notice that in the in the heat of battle... The sun has already, you've been exploring this hillside and evading pit vipers and um, discovering an outpost of gnolls and the, the sun has already begun to set. For them. Um, all right, uh, they go first and they make it away. Ah, uh, Yeah, I think Bainta was like, he, had, he immediately dropped his sword and pulled out his bow and like said like, take them down and but they're, they're already gone. He's like, damn it. Um, so you've let's got hope they don't have friends. A dead friend and three dead gnolls and a, a knoll campsite at the top of the hill. Nice. What can you... can Jor retrieve um his arrows or no? Oh yeah, let's do uh, do a D one hundred for the percent of arrows that you find out there that haven't splintered. How does that work for his uh, sling stones? Just. Stones just, are just rocks. Yeah, you can just, yeah, yeah, okay. just pick up some rocks. Yeah, let's pick up some more rocks. Okay. Binta immediately like drops to uh check out Wolf uh Wolfwin. Yeah. And is um like he he picks him up and he's like he's dead. Damn it. And he like curses oh. in I don't know if it's a neutral tongue or not, but he curses in the the, the uh language of the It's probably old actual people. curse words. Uh, you know, it's Life be with funny. you, brother. Okay. Um, and he just sort of shakes his head and he's like, damn it. Um, um, he says, uh, uh, we didn't get, this is, uh, I don't like seeing our companions die like this. It was stupid. It was stupid of him to run up that hill. Stupid for me to chase him too. And he shakes his head. Oh, you've got a thing for this. Awesome. Cool. Um, yeah, I think he throws, like he picks up a rock and just, just like throws it against a tree. And he says, I'm going to check out their camp. And he starts walking up the hill with his sword out. All right. Or goes up there with him. Yeah, we can all go up there. Guthrum had 19 gold and one silver piece on him. In case anybody wanted to, uh, you know, uh, not necessarily throw a funeral. Although if you felt like it, that's neat. Yeah, that's probably or, you know, what you need to do. <laughs> we do that for our friend. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean... Uh, we gotta throw yeah. you off to the side right now. I'll pick you up on the way back, I guess maybe. But <laughs> yeah, it'll um, at least buy you a round of drinks. It turns out that the absolutely gnolls, uh, the gnolls have been robbing from nearby people. Um, as you crest the top of the hill, you can see down below the ruins of what was once an attempt to make settlement further inland from Zelkor's Ferry. Mm. Turns out. An entire, f a complete failure uh, uh, down in the uh, the valley below. Uh, but you do find uh, in the camp ninety silver pieces that they oh, wow. have uh, taken from people, as well as uh, two spears um, that the and um, one uh, working set of chainmail. Anyways, I can't do that with that. And it's freaking heavy to carry. Um, it has been hard going in the mists and just uh, the few miles away from uh, Zelkor's Ferry to make your way along the riverside and the, uh, the 
pits of vipers and, uh, and then a knoll outpost on the top of a hill. It's now currently uh, early evening. Oof. I will take that chain mail. All right, you got it. Does somebody want some ring mail? Uh, I can only wear leather. Okay, I'll just sell it, sell it later. Though. Early evening. So have we found what we came out here to look for? Can we see the supposed mouth of doom? That's a good point. And as the, uh, so I will say, as the the sun has risen, it's burned off some of the mist, and you can see a little bit further. You can see that there's an island on the other side of the river across from you with a hillside that goes up into the, the misty horizon. And then there's a twin hill uh, that you can see on, on the opposite side of this hill that's barren and rocky. And down below in the valley, there's a settlement that looks ruined and a road. That's what you can see from where you are. Uh, and your your information tells you that the, the entrance to the Mouth of Doom is somewhere south of Zelkor's Ferry. Hmm, maybe it's down there. Uh, I, I just... Uh, being a, go ahead. I was just saying I ditched my old ring mail. Don't want to carry that. Bainta says um, maybe we should leave, make a cairn here for a wolf win. Before I agree. Back. Yeah. So I think he um, he uh, starts hauling, like brings, drags up the body and places it on the ground at the very top of this hill. And um, it takes, respectfully takes off anything that would be um, like he might not want to bring with him into the next life but he also leaves like his sword like on his chest and um like does it in a really cool. way it's like, respect we respect our the people he says this he says we respect those who fall with us and looks at everybody and then he starts to like carefully place stones around him and then he um he goes back down to the knolls and he just and he he hacks their heads off and um cuts cuts uh, stakes and puts stakes up on the hill with the heads on it. And he just shouts out and he says, he says, Wolf one fell here. And he says, remember, remember what he did. Um, your, your voice echoes into the mist across the river to the opposite of the side. Foul be beasts of chaos. Yeah, remember beasts of chaos, fear us. And uh, like, um, Wolf one did not die in vain. And he like, spits on the ground like to, in the direction further into the wilderness and then he um he takes uh some of his own gold he actually goes into his pocket and just like doesn't even care how much it is he just takes a bunch of gold and he like puts it to his chest and then he um he puts it into the stones with wolfwin for the next life friend all right what's what's next john that was everybody want to do that that was cool. I think we should find the mouth before we head back, if we can. Yeah. Head a little bit farther. But if it's getting dark and we're going to be traveling back in the middle of the night, that may not be a good idea. I thought he said it was the next morning. Uh, so, um, basically, two hours of gameplay uh, for each expedition. Uh, the first part of it, tech, introductions... And the night before in Zelkor's Ferry, then you start the next day, and the remaining time up to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is that 18-hour period. And by, oh, okay. by the end of that, you don't, I should also note, you don't have to worry about getting back. And there's no role for return. Oh. So you simply are exhausted and out of supplies at the end of the day, and you return to the Bristleback Inn. Um, sure. well, maybe we'll, it also, we have half an hour left, right? Yeah. Time passes we should... at one for one time, I should also note. So so it does you'll have to figure out accommodations. If you can stay at the bristle back in, your stuff's secure. If not, then it's not secure, but uh, you know but anyway, so it's a reason to make money as well. I mean I think it might not be bad to walk along the, the saddle, like along the ridge here, like you were saying, oh. um, Martin. And see if we can see it. And also, if we stay on the top, as it's getting dark, maybe we'll see some campfires or there's any other light around. It's a thought. Somebody write yeah. down the silver that we took. We could sure. do that later. Uh, okay. It's, it's I just nine. want to make sure that I didn't want anybody to forget about that. These silver pieces. All right. Um, 
Okay, so uh, you guys move uh, to the next hill. I'll describe what you can kind of see. You see a large, rocky, open, low area, uh, kind of a flood plain. And there on uh, the other side of it, uh, from where there are roads and abandoned and ruined settlements, you see a wooded area. The woods oh. there are close together and uh, dark and old and full of moss and vine. Uh, it looks very That doesn't crazy. sound like a nice place to go. And uh, on the opposite side here, you see um, a building uh, also looks ruined and um, and abandoned. Ooh. And, Let's go there. Um, that, and then you see you see a bunch of uh, you see a bunch of woods here at the base of a, a much larger hill that rises um, uh, a few a, a few hundred feet up on on the hillside, and the hillside's barren opposite you. That's as far as you can see in the mist, except. Off in the distance, you can see the, a hilltop in the mist. Mm. Let's go check the building out. You guys want to go check the building out if we can make it there? Sure. I'm into, uh, yeah. th uh, thieves uh, all about ruins. Yeah, sure. No light or any campfires or anything like that, hey? Uh, yeah, you don't see any uh, smoke rising or anything like that. Um, yeah. You can see here that sometime in the past, someone had tried to make a life here. Someone else had tried to build. Build on some success that they had had. But this is a ruined cottage. It's fallen into disrepair and the thatched roof is gone. Grass grows in the dirt floor on the inside and there's only insects that now live here. But from where you are, you see strange stone structures on the top of a hill uh, and a hillside. And, um, yeah. And then, just on the behind you on this road is uh, some very thick forests. Some hoary, mossy forests. Okay. I think the stones look promising. What? The, the stone area... Let's take a look there then. Sure. Yeah, I think this cottage, like I, I think that uh, Bainta would at least just sort of kick over um, furniture um, and see it just a really cursory yeah. ten kind of search. See if there's any like trap doors or anything on the floor leading to like a basement or something. Yeah. Um, kicking around in the uh, the ruined cottage. Um, it looks like this place was long ago picked apart and abandoned. Uh, there's nothing okay. here of, of use. Um, you do, however, see... Uh, as it, so, it's now been oh, a few hours. And um, you finally find a huge stone demon face. Uh, the visage of some dark demon carved into the stone on the side of the sill. With an open mouth, ten feet tall, gaping stone maw, and stairs of black leading down into mm. the darkness. Alrighty. Looks like we, we found our entrance. Who would make such a thing just for a Ominous. stairs into the ground? Uh, and what is your... Well, let me get... Uh, here. Are we going in? Yeah, that's another question. Are you going? Actually, and also in twenty-five um, more minutes. Down one player. Yeah, let's do it. Wolf <laughs> Ooh, yeah. yeah, check out the entrance. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm 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 here. I'm still interested in what happens. So it's like I I also just deleted Wolfwin and added in my fighter that I rolled up. So you know, oh, don't, <laughs> don't, don't 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 um, delete. Uh, don't never delete them because um, if you look. Um, but the thing is, you can only see this if uh, if you knew the person. But there's a gigantic. Oh. I'll take a screen capture and post this later. But I have okay. what's called the rolls of courage, and there's like a list of characters some 20 feet deep of dead characters here. That nice. Um, oh, that's super fun. Yeah, but they're 
being roll twenty, you you only know them if you knew them in life. You know, but their their legends will seed and do things in the world too. So I don't, you know. Oh, that's cool. Well, I can I can change it back. All I did was enter the fighter's values on the cleric's character sheet. So oh yeah, go that... for it. I actually have your uh, I, I have your icon here, your token. That's all I need. But yeah. Do you guys want the the thief to try to sneak in a little bit with like hide in shadows and move silently? Not that I'm very good at it, but that's probably a good idea. No yeah, boy, here we go. Here we go. Just, <laughs> if there's like, uh, <laughs> let's just um, before you even, I, I grab you and I say, wait, 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 and yeah. um, let's not be stupid like Wolf One was. Um, <laughs> oh, oops. <laughs> I'll, no, I'm. Soldier will raise an eyebrow. I'm good. <laughs> hey, I'm super too. I love it. So uh, life like on the streets, though. Know, like, I don't jump into things. That, like, I do it carefully. At least as best I can. So, so Jor is is a thief and is wanting to try to go ahead in the dark, <laughs> quietly and move silently. And okay, I guess I can't see in the dark. I'd have to have a torch out, so it's not really. I wouldn't be moving that very silently. So, yeah, uh, uh, maybe not then. So you don't sneak ahead. Well, I mean, I can't really see in the dark, correct? I mean, so I'd kind of yeah. Be the, best silly. You, the best you could do is go down to the edge of the light and the stairs and just listen in the dark. Do a seal song. Okay, that's what I'll do then. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. I have a hooded lantern that might be better than a torch. Um, okay, I have a so, lantern as well. Two sources of light should do us. Uh, absolutely, yeah. I'll go as far as far deep as I can go in uh, as the light goes. Uh, I'm trying to lose Torch at the top or whoever's got one to light yeah. it. Yeah. Help you out. Moving. Light. You know, hide in shadows, trying to move silently, and okay. So you can make a uh, a listen check uh, or a hear noise check down at the bottom to see uh, what you're able to. Okay, hear. So I got a three and six chance. So I'll roll a d six. Got a bad feeling, Matt. Don't say that. <laughs> oh, I don't hear nothing. Oh, and I'm supposed to roll that. My bad. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll, Go ahead. I'll, I'll, no, no. I, I, well, yeah, actually. Yeah. Okay. I will roll it. <laughs> let, me, let me also see a couple things here. Um, okay. Um, so what you hear is very good news. You hear, um, you hear the, uh, every so often, um, the scuttling of loose stone, uh, that makes you question what might be there and the echoes of your breath and you can hear your own heartbeat. So as far as you can tell, you hear nothing in the darkness. And I run back upstairs and like, yep, no, nope, I don't hear nothing and except for silence. It's something going, something bad's down there. Nothing good ever comes out of silence, I don't think. How long is the stairwell and how wide is it for us? Um, it's uh, probably the stairs go down some 20 feet. Uh, they're probably, uh, they're 10 feet wide and about 15, 20 feet tall. Okay. Um, this carving in the wall, like, how old is it? The this demon mouth is it, uh, and has it been kept up at all, or is it just like a really old mossy thing? It is a really old mossy thing. Okay. It's been here for a very long time. Okay, the, the last thing that um, Bainta will do bef if, before we go down, if we're going to do that, is if there are any... Um, look, we've already walked on this, but he's going to go back a little bit into the off of the stone, if there is any, and, and find dirt and see if there's, like, worn tracks coming in and out. Well, that's smart. Path or anything. Is anything using this? Uh, you do not find any tracks. It looks to you like uh, no one has been by this way in a long time. At least since the weather uh, from the last season has come through, and it's currently midsummer. Well, lads, this is good luck. Seems like we're the only ones who've been to this place for a while. Might be a lot of—it's uh, not yet been looted. 
perhaps. Yeah. All right, so here, here's an idea. Idea from Rhode Island, we don't pronounce ours. Um, so if you guys want, as we go down, I can stay a little bit ahead of everybody with the light being the thief, trying to be sneaky. And then, you know, if something happens, I'll run back. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to go um, be a person holding the torch with a shield. Um, yep. you can run and I'll be ahead as far as I can be, trying to not, like, tip anything off or... Okay, so I have uh, right, cool. Jor, uh, at, at, at in the lead, Bantha. Like at point, yeah, point, yep. And, and then uh, who kind of is next hey. to Bantha? Hey, uh, probably. Can we go two, two abreast? Yes. That's a good idea, oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, that's better. If we're doing that, yeah. then I would stay in the front rank as well. Okay. You'll Not with Jor, Jor, but with, with Bantha. Okay, then. Yeah. Second. Okay. The second row. All right. Okay. And okay. we'll leave Flanagan back there in the second rank with you. Flanagan died too, no? I don't even think he got hit. Oh, okay. My yeah. bad. Oh, wow. Look at this. Cool. Nice. And I suppose while we're at the entrance, I'll lay hands on myself. Is that a thing I'm allowed to do? Yeah. Pray, well, for, all, right? yeah. pray for healing? Yeah. I don't uh, think so. Uh, yes. So I will step ahead a little bit. Uh, I tell everybody, hey, we can go uh, east or west or south. Which way should we go? What do you think? I think we follow the path and choose either left or right as our, our way through the maze. And just turn that way first every time. Unless something spooks you. Okay, so... That sounds okay. Let me go, I'll go to the right. Binta will step okay. forward the, a little bit too. And okay. just look around. Uh, in the torchlight, you can see old stone flagstones, massive that have been laid here a long time ago. Um, and, mm. uh, George was going to try to like, oh, sorry, go ahead. It was very well constructed. Uh, and, uh, you have, uh, Onyx stone stairs behind you and a black stone walls on the opposite end with corridors leading in, uh, on the other side where there are stone doors. Uh, oh, okay. In these various alcoves, as far as uh, what you can see ahead. And uh, you don't hear anything else, and the air smells. Um, uh, it smells old, like the air here has not cycled in ages upon ages. And in the lack of oxygen, your torchlight even sputters, uh, gasping for air. Wow. All right, so George down here on this southern wall, kind of like keeping it against the wall, kind of like. Going as far as the light will go, so we've stopped right there. Okay. Being the, like, gestures for the others to come up with the torches. Um, who's got, it looks like um, Roll20 set up with some people. Oh, there we go. Olger's got torches. Yeah, I have, a, I have a lantern going. Although, to be honest, it should probably be on um, Flanagan, if I'm in the front. Okay, uh, I'll put his lantern on. I have a lantern, but, but I don't need to... If everybody else has light. Lantern illuminates 60 feet. Uh, okay, so you're going to take your torch and lantern off? So is it just going to be Flanagan? I'll get Flanagan, I'll get Flanagan my, lantern. my lantern. Okay. All right, so I'm like, hey, there's some doors up here. Should I go check them out? Um, Carefully. Okay. So yeah. The door is going to go up here. And he's going to look at these doors, see if there's anything, like, runes or anything on them. Uh, listen, and check the traps. I'm going to die a horrible death, I know it. <laughs> um, while this is happening, I wouldn't, I think Bantha will uh, have his sword out, put away his shield, but take his torch. And so all we have right now is a lantern that Flanagan has. Yes. 
Okay. Yeah, I think Bainta is going to light another. I think two sources of light would be helpful. So he's going to have his sword yep. out and then light a torch. Okay. Can't hurt. It's it's really cool with roll twenty how you can actually feel that too. Like the lack of uh, light is. Oh yeah. Impressive. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jor, uh, you can roll a d6. It will take you ten minutes to do so. If you do. That. Okay. Okay. Um, if that's okay with you guys. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Right. While he's doing that, um, I'd like to see if we can fan out just a little bit and see if we can see the extents of the room, just to get the measure of it, approximately. You, uh, you hear yeah. mm -hmm. um, yipping noises uh, coming from this direction. I kind of sign back to them. I'm like, I'm like, I do like, I do like the. I, I walk back. And I'm like, can I tell them what I hear? What uh, I heard? Before, before you do that, what did you get oh, on your uh, D6? Oh, do it again, or I rolled it right there. I, I'm sorry, I can't see the chat. Just let me know. Uh, what, what did you oh, get I rolled a three. I'm sorry. Okay, a three. Uh, I'm sorry, and I'm also the one that I keep forgetting. Please remind me the thief skills. I'm the one that rolls if it's a hero oh. ways or. or my bad. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's my bad. Uh, I keep forgetting. Uh, that's a, here sounds is three and six. I'm sorry. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'll take that anyway. So, okay, so I'll tell okay. you what you hear. Uh, let me okay, just gotcha. check. And, uh, let's see here. Wow. 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 Um, um, you hear more yipping noises coming from that way, too, on the opposite side <laughs> of that door. Oh, where did I hear the original yipping noises from? I thought they were from behind the door, and they weren't. Uh, no, they were north of you up here. Oh, okay. I let her. I let everybody know. Did we all hear the yipping noises to the north? Everyone hears the yipping noises to the north. Uh, okay, well, I like the owls. Only Jor Argarin uh, can hear the heard the yipping noises on the other side of this door. Behind the door. All right. So uh, I let them know, yeah, there was some yipping noises uh, very similar to the ones to the north behind their door as well. They do Can not, we tell if they sounded like the owls? They do not. Uh, they sound oh, like okay. some sort of pest, except larger. Mm. Sorry, I'm going to excuse okay. myself for one moment. I've got to knock at the door. Yeah. We'll be right back. Yeah. Okay. What, uh, what yeah. do we do? Uh, do we head um, to the... Let's head to the... Let's head to the north, see what that is about. Yeah. Sure. Um, we should Bainta probably clear Bainta, out this turn first. Bainta says, I'd rather see what's behind us before we get caught. Um, That's true, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. Um, he, he'll just walk over, and, and uh, Folger was saying that he wanted to just sort of survey the room. Um, but yeah, I think, like, I'll just walk down to the south and shine. Is there a, a, a door to the south here in the southern alcove, or no? Uh, yes, in that southern alcove. Cove, you can see oh. The um, okay. I think it's just slightly off the um, roll twenty. All right. Before you do that, um, the yipping noises. Uh, uh oh. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, here we go. There's also some weird thing to the west here. I don't know what it is, but um. Like the ground is dirt or something. Uh oh. Uh, there are three little creatures, chittering and chattering back and forth with each other, um, and they uh, they step into your light and then seem really, uh, they seem really startled. Um, heck? Man, my roll twenty is so slow. And then uh, yeah, and then, it's having a seizure or something. Yeah, I'm gonna reload mine actually. And uh, and then my the, video uh, keeps locking up. I gotta keep going out and coming back in. I don't know what's going on with that. Which I'm surprised because they're like, what? I got a gig up and a gig down. Okay. Now I can't see anything. Oh, now I see it. Okay. And anyways, they uh, they run off into the darkness, uh, terrified. 
uh, as soon as they uh, they come into your light and they see you oh. and it's not, they're like, oh, da, 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 and then they run off. Well, not a bad thing. No, I suppose unless they're getting their friends. Um, oh, that's true. Yeah. Bainthes just um, like he's. Uh, I think he's not really saying any too much right now, and just he he walks over here and just oh. waves light just to get an idea of what's um, on this side as well. Holy, this is, this is huge, he says. Um, what is this? Go ahead. Let's see. Can you ping what it is you're uh, you're looking at uh, one more time? Sorry. Yeah, so Bainta is... Bainta walks over here, and he's just, like, holding the torch over his head. And um, he's... Well, I mean, he just notices I mean, he just... that it extends way to the north. Um... And is like, oh man, there's a lot of options. And and is also, uh, he's looking to the west here, where that looks like something different happens to the ground. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like the stones to the west are um, unevenly unevenly arranged. Uh, and there's an alcove to the west. And I'll describe what you see as you cast your light on it. It's um. Uh, yeah, because I'm seeing that like two blocks okay. in, it's uh, dirt looking brown. Yeah, a there brown is corridor. A, uh, so as you cast your light there, there's a carving of a hand over top of the alcove. Um, mm. Otherwise, the alcove is empty, and it's a stone wall on the opposite side. Okay, I wonder, Ross, if there's a mistake or something. Like, I don't know if there's supposed to be a secret door there, because I can actually see a hallway Oh, past it, yeah. the 10 by 10 alcove. Yeah, that is a, a mistake, but it doesn't actually affect anything right now, because you can't do anything with it, so. Okay. Oop. Ain't no attention to the main behind the curtain. Yeah, there, there's nothing yeah. you can do with it anyway, so that should fix that. Cool. Not related. Okay, so there's... Yeah, all right. I, I imagine that, like, these creatures ran away. I don't know if you caught that, Martin. Um, yeah. The kobolds, or what, maybe the kobolds, they chittered and ran away. I think that this is just... Bainta just did this, like, really quickly. Like, he's just striding around the corner in mm. 10 or 15 seconds, just looking around to get a sense of what's... Uh, what we're face dealing with here. Okay. Um, and like to see if there's like someone's going to come up from behind us, but yeah. as you guys uh, have gone down the stairs, it's actually been an incredibly long day and difficult to even try to find the mouth of doom. Uh, as you make it down here, uh, this place is oppressive and claustrophobic and slow moving, and it's hard to get around, and it's choked with stale air and vine and collapsed portions of ceiling and everything. And as you clamber around in the dark. It takes a long time to do these things. And in dungeon time, I currently have that your, uh, well, your torch, you lit your torch a, a couple of um, uh, turns in, but uh, uh, but it's been an hour in dungeon time. Wow. Uh, so uh, we are now actually, the day has exhausted you. Um, and head back. And uh, you all make it back to the bristle back in in the evening, having uh, oh. having survived uh, the uh, um, having survived your first foray into Rapanathuk, at least four of you out of five, anyways. <laughs> and uh, you discovered the entrance to the Mouth of Doom. Now the thing is that when you do it in Overland, I don't that rule doesn't apply. So anytime you do something with Overland travel, you have to remember where it is and you have to go to it next time, etc. You know? mm -hmm. um, but uh, but I mean you know where it is. So um, yeah. and uh, you can also try to find other entrances yeah. or follow up on other rumors next time. So cool, nice. I'm gonna. Uh, so that's the end of our first expedition.